So we're in for a treat today. Andy Popovich is going to be speaking. I walked in this morning not expecting to see Al. He uh, came to me last week and asked if I could, if I wanted to speak because he had an appointment, had surgery. So I s asked Ben, who's emceeing this morning? He's like, well, Al is. I'm like, what? I said, he's not he's supposed to be here. He said, well, he was here when I got here this morning. So I'm glad to see you. <laughs> Well, it's a privilege to be up here in front of you guys this morning. It's an, it's an honor, really, um, that I get to be, that I'm asked to come up and, and speak to you guys. And I got to tell you, when I get the opportunity and I stand up here and I see the amount of men that are in this room, it moves me to emotions, man. Because I remember when we started in the chapel and there was just a small group of us and it was called Morning Fire. You know, maybe there were 15 or 20 of us, and now we're up to consistently over 400 of you guys that show up every week, man. You must be hungry. Come on. Well, let me open us in prayer this morning, so join me, please. Father God, I'm, I'm so grateful to be here in your living room, um, to be with these men who are hungry, not just for Ricky's breakfast, but for you to show up. Each week, Father, they come to be fed by you. And so I'm inviting you in, Holy Spirit, come, because I need you. I need you to deliver this message. And I'm asking that you open the, the ears of these men, open their hearts to receive what you've prepared, Father God, and do the work that only you can do. And I give you all the glory and honor and praise. And it's in your son's precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. So I, I sent my slides to Ben last night too. And I had a text from him this morning. It says, I got your email, but I can't see your slides. So I don't know if they're going to show up or not. But um, this morning... My title is Breakthrough in the Power of Your Why. And as I was preparing for this message, not thinking about Al opening with the joke almost every week, um, I went in search of, of some jokes, so bear with me. And in my search, I found it interesting how many uh, comedians are making money on roasting their own personal struggles. So Christopher Titus, I found this, this saying from him. It says, I finally stopped drinking when I hit 17 years old. Yes, imagine the screw-up I must have been. Stop drinking because it isn't really good for your health. And I fell into a bonfire. Yeah, you're done drinking at that point. You don't need AA. Falling into a bonfire is a one-step program. And then, of course, a, a lot of you know about Richard Pryor, you know? He caught himself on fire freebasing cocaine, causing severe burns over 50% of his body. And he openly shared this, roasted himself at a comedy set on the Sunset Strip. Lastly, the, uh, Bill Hicks says, if you want to understand a society, take a good look at the drugs it uses. And what can this tell you about an American culture? Well, look at the drugs we use. Except for pharmaceutical poison, there are only two drugs that Western civilization tolerates. Caffeine from Monday to Friday to energize you to make you a productive member of society. And alcohol Monday to Friday to keep you too stupid to figure out the prison you're living in. Honestly, I, I laughed at that at first, and then I thought, oh my gosh, man. There's a lot of people that are living in that reality, from coffee to alcohol. That's no life to live. 
Addictions or strongholds, in my opinion and experience, are no laughing matter. For some of us, they vary in depth and destruction. And in this room, I can't imagine the stories that are here. My past carries some very addictive behavior, and while I'm choosing not to go into the full detail of that this morning, I will tell you that it's quite literally a miracle that I'm standing here. I've been saved by God's grace. And I am a redemptive story. Alcohol in the hands of many is a nasty, addictive monster. And in a culture where everything is acceptable and nothing is off limits, coffee should be the least of our concerns. Sexual addiction is running rampant in our society. And I believe it's the strongest tool of the enemy to take you men out. Now, before you squirm in your chair or tune me out, because this is not your personal struggle, just stick with me. Because this is not a message just about sexual addiction. It's a, it's a message about breakthrough from whatever stronghold is holding on to you in your life. If you would turn with me to 1 Peter 4. I'm going to start in verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. Around here we refer to that we refer to that as being vulnerable and transparent with your with your BSAs. God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Have you done that? With your stronghold, with your addiction? Have you cast that upon him because he cares for you? I think a lot of times we, we read this, but it doesn't go from our head to our heart. And we don't apply it. We've got a lot of scripture that we have memorized and we can quote it. Right now. But we don't believe it for ourselves. He goes on to say, be sober and vigilant. Be sober and vigilant. Those are pretty powerful words. Because your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That's pretty freaky. Can I get an amen? amen. Come on. He's, a, he's real. And he exists. And he wants to take you out. That's his end game. And he doesn't care how. He'll stop at nothing to take you out. Resist him. Steadfast in faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. I love that he shows me that I'm not the only one. But it's, it's with all of us. We all, we all have struggles. And as a brotherhood, we should be coming together. Linking arm in arm, caring for each other to the degree that we, we won't leave a man behind. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. I had to read that a couple of times. It says, but may the God of all grace...
perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. That's the promise of the Father. That if we cast our care upon Him, He will perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To be all the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. That, that deserves an amen right there. Yeah, man. I won't ask for a show of hands. But how many of you are being devoured by the enemy? Day in and day out. It torments you when you go to sleep and it's there when you wake up. And do you feel stuck with no way out? I'm going to give you guys um, four tools that I've used to empower me through my journey to freedom. Because I have a really colored past and it's taken a lot of really hard work to get to a place where I can say that I'm free from the strongholds that the enemy had on me. Yeah, freedom. And it feels good. Right here, it feels good. I can look people in the eye because shame no longer has a hold of me. No longer has a hold on me. So the first tool is what you guys are really familiar with if you're around here much is P, B, and J, and W. So prayer, Bible, journal, and worship. Okay? You can't get enough of it. Like a good peanut butter and jelly sandwich. The second tool is to get a BSA. For those of you who might be new here, BSA is a blood-stained ally. In my definition of a blood-stained ally is one who is, while he is broken and bloody, he's still willing to reach down and pick you up and sometimes carry you on. That's a blood-stained ally. Someone that will listen to you and give you space to be vulnerable, transparent, and honest. Because that's what we need. We've got to have a safe space in order to share our heart. Which a lot of men don't do well. We were taught to be tough, pick yourself up, and keep moving. Well, I'm calling BS on that. The most important thing that you can do as a man is be vulnerable with another man. Share your heart with him. Let him in. And let him carry you. Okay? In weeks past, Steve threw out a challenge to become the hunter or the hunted. Be sober. Be vigilant. This is impossible with alcohol atrophy, porn poisoning, workaholic tendencies, you name it. There's plenty out there for the enemy to bind you up in. And for me, I lost over two decades of my life wrapped up in various addictions. It makes me angry. I was tormented for more than half my life. And I can't get it back. But what I can do is have the courage to stand up here and challenge you guys to go after what God has put in front of you. It's going to take work. Hard work. And I claim in Jesus' name no more. I've had enough. I'm not letting him take any more of my brothers out. No way. So he challenged me to challenge you guys. 
I'm not, um, I'm not bragging by any means, but I was up late last night doing this message because I wrestled with it. I wrestled with how to deliver this message to you guys because it's not an easy topic, man. Nobody wants to talk about this. Nobody wants to talk about our addictive behaviors. Everybody wants to avoid them and skirt around them. And we walk and we act like everything is good. Well, it's not. It's not. And you younger guys, there's plenty of men in this room that will link arms with you and help you either come out of what's got a hold of you or avoid what's in front of you. So you just have to reach up. You just have to reach out. Put your phones down and have a conversation with one of us. Okay? Good. So God led me to the story of Abraham and Isaac in Genesis 22. You guys can turn there if you want. I'll start in verse 2. Then, then he, God, said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I shall tell you. I got a pause on that one. <laughs> My son? The one that you promised me? The one, only one I have? You want me to take him and offer him as a burnt offering? Are you freaking kidding me? Like, really? <laughs> Reading on, we learn that Abraham prepares God's command. He, he, he walks it out. And even avoids his son's question when he says, <clears throat> where's the sacrificial lamb? Dad, where is it at? I don't see it. Can you, I mean, could you imagine that? I can't. I can't imagine that. And verse 9, he says, and he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar I don't know, guys. <laughs> this, is, this has jacked with me. I, I've gone through the pain and anguish of having an adult child pass away unexpectedly. And I really wrestled with this one. See, mine happened unexpectedly. He knew this was coming. And he still did it. And if I'm honest, man, I can only hope and pray that I'd respond with the same kind of faith that Abraham did. And I had to ask myself, how could he do that? How? And God reminded me of one of my favorite tools through my recovery, and that's my why. Why? Why do I want freedom for what, from whatever struggle I'm facing? Why? My personal why is that I want to love God with my whole heart. The whole thing. The one that we were originally created with before the fall of Adam and Eve. A good heart. It's in there. But it's been calloused and broken and beaten but it's in there and we got to uncover it. I want to love him with my whole heart and I don't want anything to sever my line of communication with the Father. I've been in that place for far too long in my life and I don't like having my backside uncovered, to be honest with you. So I don't want anything to separate my connection with my Father. And a really close second is that my wife and my kids. They deserve it. They deserve to have a healthy husband and a healthy father. <clears throat> so 
So I had to fight for it. I had to fight for it. And I had to continually remind myself of God's greatest commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Those three components together, it's our whole being. I can't love him with only one part. I can't just read scripture and love him here. I've got to read the scripture and soak it up here. And then I've got to act it out. I've got to walk it out. This, so the how is only possible when our why is powerful. The how is only possible when our why is powerful. So I wish I could have called Abraham up, but he didn't answer. Um, But here's what I believe Abraham's why looked like or might have looked like. He loved, trusted, and had incredible faith in God. That was his why. Because the only other explanation I could come up with was that he's freaking psycho to be able to do something like that. I mean, guys, he had him on the altar, bound up, ready to set it ablaze. So his why allowed him to walk it out. He trusted his father. Abraham was willing to sacrifice his only son, the one he loved, for God. And God was willing to sacrifice his only son for you, whom he loved. God was willing to lay his, send his only son for you. Be, be honest, what stronghold and addiction in your life that you love? Because I'll tell you, in my experience, it wasn't until I was honest in my heart that I loved what I was doing that I could actually wor- walk towards freedom. That's why I failed and failed and failed and failed because I was lying to myself tried to fool myself into believing that I didn't really love it, said addiction, whatever it is. Own it. You're human. There's plenty out there to get a hold of you. Own it. Pick yourself up, grab a bloodstained ally, and move forward. So are you willing to take that said addiction that you love and sacrifice it to the Lord? Lay it on the altar and set it ablaze. I missed my tools. (laughs) I got got so excited in my in my talk. I gave you guys two, right? All right. Let me find three. Sorry. I'm new at this. Ah, there it is. Be vulnerable, be honest with your whole heart. That's number three. Be vulnerable, be honest with your whole heart. Don't come when you're not ready. You got to be ready with your whole heart. And the last tool, the final tool is know your why and carry it with you. I don't care if you write it on, your, on a piece of paper and put it in your wallet, put it in your phone, because you have to have it. You need your why with you. You have to know why when the temptation comes to go into whatever it is that has a hold of you, you have to be able to say your why. This is why I'm not doing that. So it's got to be powerful. Does that make sense? It's up to you. I encourage you to sit with the Lord. Ask Him to reveal to you what a powerful why looks like in your life. So I'll just close by offering this. If you're here 
and you're struggling or you're stuck, I implore you, don't leave this room without telling someone. This is a safe space. And if you don't have someone, my email is uh, on the last slide at the end of the questions. Reach out to me. I mean that. God's put me in a place where he's asked me to, to journey with men, and I'm all in, man. I'm all in for it. Because what one man can do, another man can do. Say it with me. What one man can do, another man can do. Say it like you mean it. Come on. We'll work on that. <laughs> so I'm going to close this in prayer, all right? Father, I thank you for, um, I thank you for this opportunity. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for my journey, Father. I really am. I wouldn't give any of it back because I, I know, I see you using it for your glory and your good. And I'm all in for that. Father, I pray that this message that you, that you put on my heart has resonated with someone. And I'm asking you to prick their heart right now, Father. Move them to have the courage to reach up, to reach out, and to set this as a new day, a new course towards freedom in their life, Father. I praise you. All the days of my life, I thank you and I love you. And it's in your son's precious name, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you, guys.